City. Welcome to Cleveland State Basketball. Tonight, the Vikings, with a record of 18 and 7, take on the Panthers of Eastern Illinois with a record of 15 and 9. But more importantly, the Vikings are 9 and 3 in the AmQ8 Conference, one game behind the Panthers with a record of 8 and 4. Good evening, everyone. I'm Alan Davis, along with my partner, Bingo Smith. And bingo, needless to say, this game is a very crucial one for the Vikings tonight. You're right. This game, uh, Cleveland State holds their own destiny in their hands tonight. If a win tonight and a win Monday night can propel them into first place, hopefully alone. And, of course, you talked with Coach Kevin Mackey earlier. I talked with him about the injuries that sustained his team over the past couple of months, and he's very concerned about it. You know, he lost Kevin Ramsey the last game. He only had two points and had a mild concussion. We hope that he can go tonight. Well, I think when you have injuries, it always hurts you. Clinton Ramsey went down, and he's questionable tonight with the neck injury. Bob Crawford has had a shaky knee and a shaky ankle. He performed very well Saturday night, and hopefully he'll be able to do the same tonight. Well, tonight's game and your last game with Valparaiso, will that kind of lead you into the MQA tournament? Or do you already have plans for the tournament? Well, I think, uh, I believe in taking them one at a time. I think you have to take every game separately and the tournament separately. We're just concerned with tonight's game, bingo. And of course, when it comes to injuries, the Panthers lost a key man and seven foot Kevin Duckworth. I talked with Coach Samuels earlier about how that will affect his team. Yeah, it affects us a great deal. Uh, you know, we, we've relied on him on a lot of things our, in our offense. He's a big rebounder for us, and uh, uh, he's a catalyst that gets it going at times. Uh, you know, we use him in uh, various special plays that we run, and uh, besides the size that we lose, moving a player off the bench at this late point in the season takes away the strength that you count on to overcome fatigue and foul problems and so on. So, you know, it's, a, it's an important loss for us. Now, the conference is down to two games tonight and Saturday for you. Uh, you're one game behind. What's it going to take in the final analysis? Well, for us, because there's only two games left and we are a game down, I think it takes both wins for us. Uh, the two teams ahead of us, Cleveland State and Western Illinois, uh, of course, they're fighting one another right now. And uh, But I think they also feel like it'll take two wins to win the crown outright. I think if they uh, split, there's a good chance that they'll tie with someone for the league championship in their remaining two games. It may be premature to talk about the tournament, but do you feel that even if you don't win first place, that the tournament still offers a, a lot of hope? Oh, great hope. Uh, Cleveland State was evidence of that last year when they came from uh, uh, sixth place finish in the conference to the conference championship game. That's the great thing about postseason tournaments is that uh, it gives you new hope, and literally anybody can come alive at that point in the season and play well, and play well whether you're playing at home or on the road. Good luck. Thank you. Now, the last time these two teams met, they went into overtime before the Vikings won 83-72. That was at public hall. Being on the road could be a factor here tonight. Yes, it can. And as you know, during that time, Eastern Illinois was four, was five and four. So they've won 11 out of 15 games. So they're on a roll. They're probably one of the hottest team outside of Cleveland State in the conference right now. Okay, the stage is set. We'll have tip-off in just a couple of moments. Stay tuned. Cleveland State basketball is next. Channel 61 Sports presents Cleveland State Basketball with sports announcers Alan Davis and Bingo Smith. Catch the excitement of college basketball tonight as the Cleveland State Vikings take on the Eastern Illinois University Panthers. Tonight's game is brought to you by these fine sponsors. The Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company, maker of the new Victor Radio. It simply performs like no other tire in the world. Budweiser, the king of beers. Reach for that clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. For all you do, this Bud's for you. Revco Discount Drug Centers, where everyday low discount prices mean you'll get it for less. You need all the Revco you can get. Andy Sims Buick, Sims Brothers Buick, where our people make the difference. Curtis Mathis Home Entertainment Centers, with the exclusive four-year limited warranty. James Lumber, the one-stop lumber store. We build confidence. Daniels, Cleveland's headquarters for fine, affordable furniture. Arby's Roast Beef Restaurants. Arby's. You're right where you belong. And Mullinax Ford, home of the $85 a month Escort.
this buzz for the crew, restoring America's pride in liberty. This buzz for you. You know America takes pride in what you do. Yeah, just for you, that distinctively clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. For all you do, this buds for you. If you can see the difference between this and this, smile, because Gleam can make the same difference in your teeth. You see, only Gleam has calcium P. Laboratory tests prove it gets stained teeth whiter than any leading fluoride brand. Whiter than any gel, whiter than any polish. How much whiter? 30% whiter. And you still get Gleam's proven fluoride protection. So if your teeth aren't as white as they can be, start brushing with Gleam. You'll be smiling. Pretty. Hi, I'm Terry Adams. I'm shopping here today at Hal Arts. It's obviously the showplace of beautiful cars. No hassles and total respect made it easy for Jim Savnick to lease a new Lynx from Hal Arts. I'm Evelyn Barman, and I bought my nice marquee from a nice place, and my nice sons buy their cars there, too. Hello, I'm Hal Arts. I think they have a point. Beautiful people do make the difference. Thank you. Nancy Dassault with big news from Revco. It's the biggest news since Revco first introduced discount pricing 25 years ago. Revco has just lowered its prices on over 3,000 products, including the brand names you want most. Prices that will save you more than ever before. You'll find the lowest possible discount prices on all your favorite cosmetics, fragrances, greeting cards, even pet supplies. Stop by your neighborhood Revco today and see for yourself. Back live once again at Lance Gymnasium on the campus of Eastern Illinois University. Right now, we're going to get the starting lineup for tonight's baseball game or basketball game between the Panthers and the Vikings. And for that, let's turn to public address announcer Tim Buick. Yeah, we're, we're gonna the it's now time for the starting lineups for tonight's game between the Vikings of Cleveland State and your Panthers of Eastern Illinois. For Cleveland State, starting at guard, a 5'8 sophomore from Boston, Massachusetts, number four, Sean Hood. For Eastern Illinois, A 6'1 junior from Vincennes, Indiana, number 10, Doug Crook. For Cleveland State at guard, a 6'2 junior from Lockland, Ohio, number 22, Vince Richards. For Eastern Illinois, at guard, a 6'1 senior from Dalton, Illinois, Number 24, Troy Richardson. For Cleveland State at forward, a 6'6 junior from Cleveland, Ohio. Number 24, Clinton Smith. For Eastern Illinois at forward, a 6'4 junior from Ace St. Louis, Illinois. Number 20, John Collins. At forward for Cleveland State, a 6'7 sophomore from Cleveland, Ohio, number 33, Eric Mudd. For Eastern Illinois, a 6'7 senior at forward from Decatur, Illinois, number 52, Dirk Androff. And rounding out the starting lineup for Cleveland State at center, a 6'9 junior from Cleveland, Ohio, number 40, Bob Crawford. And for Eastern Illinois in the middle, 6'7 senior from D. Kerr, it's number 32, Steve Hopkins.
The Vikings are coached by Kevin Mackey, Panthers head coach Rick Samuels. So, so there you have the starting lineup, a very different starting lineup for both clubs tonight. The Vikings starting their all Cleveland front line of Eric Mudd, Bob Crawford, and uh, Clinton Smith. Of course, Clinton Ramsey will not see action tonight. If he does, he will see very limited action because of a slight concussion and a strained neck suffered in Saturday's loss to Southwest Missouri State. The Eastern Illinois Panthers having lost Kevin Duckworth now with a broken hand. The second major injury that the Panthers have suffered this season, Bingo. Well, I think Cleveland State has got the better hand out there right now. Eric Mudd has started a couple games before, and he knows what it's like because everyone on this team gets the amount of playing time the way Kevin Mackey substitutes his players. I think uh, they have the easiest test tonight to try to adjust to the injuries. With Mudd and Crawford, the one and two leading rebounders on the CSU Viking team, you will have a lot of strength on the board. But the uh, Panthers also with a lot of board strength up front, a lot of height anyway with the 6'7", uh, Andros, the 6'8", Hopkins, and the 6'4", John Collins. The tip goes to the Vikings, and this game is underway. Vikings winners 83-72, the first time these two teams met back on January 8th at Woodling Gym. That was an overtime contest. Vince Richards misses the first shot, but coming down with the rebound is Clinton Smith. He misses it, and coming down with the rebound is Hopkins for the Panthers of Eastern Illinois. Well, the Panthers are playing a man-to-man -man defense. Uh, what we have to do is do a lot of cutting, a lot of screening from the ball, away from the basketball, and good post-up play. Cleveland State also in a man-to-man -man defense. Underneath it goes to Dirk Andrew. And he puts up the first two points of the night for the Eastern Illinois Panthers. It's the Panthers, too. The Vikings, nothing. Androff is coming off his best game of his uh, college career. 26 points versus Valparaiso last Saturday night. That was a 91-76 win for the Panthers. Bob Crawford going up. He misses, but he is fouled by Steve Hopkins. I don't think the Panthers can afford for any of these five players on the floor right now to get in foul trouble. They only play about eight men deep, and with uh, Duckworth out, they would probably go with seven men tonight, so they can't afford to foul early in this game. And if you look at your stat sheet there, you'll see the minutes played by a lot of these guys. They average 32, 33 minutes a game. Crawford makes good on his first attempt. He's now one for one. He's a 62% free throw shooter from the line something that he would like to improve over the course of the summer. The game is tied now at two apiece. We've barely played one minute, and the press has baffled the Eastern Illinois Panthers early. They lose the ball on a five-second violation, and the turnover gives the ball back to Cleveland State. Well, with a lot of new players in there for the Panthers, they will have problems early on the press. What we have to do is hope to get a big enough lead that not close to a victory, but make things easier for us. Well, the last time that these two teams played, we did not televise the game, but I happen to be sitting in press row with uh, Rick Kilby, the associate coach of the Illinois Chicago Panthers, who gave me some very interesting revelations uh, about the, uh, the Eastern Illinois team, and we'll share those with you as the game goes along. Vince Richards puts up that basket and it is now a 4-2 Cleveland State lead. Collins almost losing it. Over to Richardson and drop to Hopkins. Hopkins does lose the ball, but he comes down with it. And Crawford takes it away for the Vikings. Vikings with the ball now. Richards to Sean Hood. Hood faking, putting it up, missing, and coming down with the rebound, Eric Mudd. Mudd not good off the glass. And finally, after all that scrambling, Eastern Illinois comes out with it, and they're going to try to slow it down. Well, Sean Hood did what we like for him to do that uh, most of the time. That call was on Crawford, uh, following Dirk Androff, and that will give the ball to the Eastern Illinois Panthers. For Crawford, his first foul, each team even with one team foul apiece. And that is Collins with his first two of the evening. 
We can't have that. That's too easy the way to score. We have to play heads up defense. Everyone has to watch the basketball. You can't take your eye off the basketball. Clinton Smith, too hard off the glass. Andrew coming down with the rebound. He had 11 of them against Valparaiso on Saturday. It has appeared to me, Bingo, that the Vikings have been missing a lot of easy shots off the glass, not only in tonight's game so far, but in the previous games that we've had in the last couple of telecasts. Well, what they're doing seem like they're trying to draw the foul instead of making the shot. You have to go up strong to make the shot and hope to get fouled. You can't try to play it both ways. Vince Richards and Clinton Smith on the follow-up. And that makes it now a 6-4 ball game. The Vikings up by two. We have played just less than, or actually just more than three minutes, 16.45 remaining. Hopkins has it smashed by Crawford and will have a jump ball on the alternate possession rule. The Panthers will keep the basketball. That was a good defensive play by Crawford that time. You saw he held his ground and waited until the guy went up for the shot to the peak of his shot. He went up and got it. Good timing by Bob Crawford. Elgin Womack, number 50 there on your screen, coming in to replace Crawford after that exchange. As you know, Bob was injured uh, two games ago. He played the last game and had a very good game. But uh, his injury is still there, and I think Coach Mackey wanted to give him a little rest. The time uh, of the long season is taking its toll on all the Vikings. A lot of them came into the shoot around this afternoon limping and hobbling and really in general uh, just I guess weary from from the throws of a long season. Doug Crook with his first attempt of the night. Not good and coming out with it. Vince Richards and finally Clinton Smith gets it. A little bit of fancy footwork and has it taken away by Crook. Crook, too hard off the glass. Hopkins has it stripped by Sean Hood. It's a three-on-one fast break. And breaking it up is Troy Richardson. That was a good defensive play that time by Richardson. He came all the way from one baseline to the other. Knocked the ball out of bounds. We have an official timeout on the floor with 16, rather 15, 55 remaining to score. Cleveland State 6, Eastern Illinois 4, and we'll be back. 972, no, 73, set. Hold it, Harriet. We'd rather sell them than count them. That's what the inventory clearance sale is all about at Curtis Mathis. Get up to $150 in savings and trade-in allowance on Curtis Mathis portables, up to $430 for color consoles, and as much as $515 on big screen TVs. We'd rather sell them than count them, so trade in your old TV and save even more. Now, during the inventory clearance sale at your Curtis Mathis Home Entertainment Centers. The enemy. Rain. A mere one-eighth inch can float your car off the road. Thus the rationale for Vector. Goodyear's unique all-season radio. So advanced, its crisscross tread actually pumps away water to help more tire and your car stay on the road. The Goodyear Vector. It simply performs like no other tire in the world. Back live at Lance Gym, there you see the score with 15.55 remaining so far on the, on the field. The Vikings are 2 of 8 to 25%. The Eastern Illinois Panthers just slightly better at 2 of 7. The Vikings 2 of 2 from the free throw line, both shot by Bob Crawford. As I said, it was good uh, defense about Richards that time, but what happened, Sean Hood didn't take a look at the floor to see where the trailing defensive personnel was coming from. I think he should have went to Vince Richards that time on the fast break. The Panthers coming away with a rebound after that missed shot by Clinton Smith. That is John Collins, the leading scorer for the Panthers with the basketball, now Doug Crook. And Richardson going from the top of the free throw line, and no good. Elgin Womack, the big E, coming down with the rebound. Panthers now have switched up. They're in a zone defense, and Elgin on the turnaround is... Misses the shot, but Clinton Smith, away from the basketball, commits the personal. That is the second team foul for the Vikings. First 
foul personal for the for Clinton Smith. That was not a good shot that time by Elgin. I, I think uh, the offensive personnel was not ready for him to shoot that basketball. That's why Clinton Smith got a foul call that time. Couple of subs getting ready to come in for the Vikings. Uh, Steve Corbin and Eddie Bryant will be in momentarily. Broke underneath, trying to get it to Androff, broken up by Eric Mudd. I tell you, whoever's gotten Androff, and Androff is a horse out there, so you really have to work. Six, I think whoever's gotten him got to get some substitution rest itself. 6'7, 230 pounds. Of course, Womack at 240 is no lightweight either. And Womack coming down with the rebound. That's two rebounds for the Big E. 1450 remaining as Clinton Smith drives the lane, and he is fouled by Androff. That is Androff's first and the team's second, and Clinton Smith will be at the line for two. This time, Clinton Smith came down, and he hesitated like he was going to take the jump shot, saw a little opening, and tried to squeeze through. He was fouled that time by Androff. And they've decided it is not a shooting foul, so Cleveland State will take the ball out of bounds underneath the baseline. Eddie Bryant into Steve Corbin. Corbin looks to Mudd, and Mudd on the turnaround puts it up and in. And we've got another foul underneath against Clinton Smith. And the doubtful starter tonight is in the ball game. Number 44, Clinton Ramsey, is in the ball game now. And no foul call on that. Androff just bowled over Steve Corbin. Nevertheless, the foul was not called and Eastern keeps the basketball. I think it should have been a, a foul call one way or the other. Somebody was in the wrong that time. It looked like a very deliberate push. Now, whether Corbin was, uh, that was a steal by Eddie Bryant. Bryant going up against Hopkins, does it, and he is fouled. Good hesitation move that time by Eddie. He saw that he was cut off to the basket. He slowed down to make the defensive man slow down, and then he burst his speed, went right to the hoop. Here we see it here. Protecting the basketball. Do you see the long stretch with the arms? Protect the basketball. Put himself between the ball and the defensive personnel. It is an 8-4 ball game as Eddie Bryant puts the first one in, and he now has his first point of the night, making it 9-4. 14-14 remaining in the first half of action here at Lance Gym on the campus of Eastern Illinois University. Perfect for Eddie Bryant. He's two for two, and it's a 10 to four ball game. Vikings on top. Paul Neidig, number 50, now in the lineup for the Eastern Illinois Panthers. He replaced Hopkins after Hopkins committed his second personal. Eastern Illinois has not scored in about four minutes. 17.50 was the last time they scored, and on that drive, it is Elgin Womack following uh, line, uh, John Collins. That time, Elgin, Elgin didn't move to the baseline to cut that man off. You see, he came from the opposite end, which is good defense, but he should have been there a little sooner to take the baseline away. Collins at the line, shooting 71% there. He's also the leading scorer for the Panthers, 18.4 points per ball game, and Collins misses on his first attempt from the free throw line. 13.51 remaining in the first half of action. It's a 10-4 Viking lead as Collins splits the pair. He now has three points, and it's a 10-5 ball game, and now the Panthers come out with a press of their own. Eddie Bryant dribbles through it. And it's still Cleveland State's ball. I think they let him get away with an air dribble that time. <laughs> well, I thought it was slightly deflected, but nevertheless, it did look somewhat strange, and uh, we will be getting a chance to take a look at it here. Well, I think it was touched, wasn't it? It looked that way to me, but we're, we're not sure. We'll just take it anyhow. A uh, traveling violation called on the Vikings, and it'll be the Panthers basketball with 13 and a half minutes remaining in the first half. Bob Crawford is back in the ball game, having replaced Elgin Womack. A good three to four minutes for the Big E, and Crawford gets his break. He's now back into the ball game. 
Nighting to Richardson to Crook. The Vikings in a man-to-man. -man. And Clinton Ramsey on their leading scorer, John Collins. What a way to come back from the injury list. I'll say, I was going to say, for a man with a concussion, he certainly knows his way around the court. Steve Corbin on the steal. Three on two. Corbin's going to take it all the way. Man puts it in. Steve Corbin with two, and it's a 12 to 5 ball game now. The Vikings trail by, or the Vikings lead by seven. Well, on this press, they really won't get hurt. Uh, every time the ball is passed uh, down court for them to be burned, they, the Panthers really don't take it to the hoop, so the, the press is really effective. The Panthers want a timeout, and that'll give, uh, that'll stop the clock with 12 minutes. 35 seconds remaining to score. Cleveland State 12, Eastern Illinois 5, and here's Corbin on the drive. You see, he made his, his commitment to the hoop before the defensive man really could plan himself to even jump for the, for the basketball. So that was a good move on Steve's part. We'll be back. This is the story of the Andy Sims Starship Specials. Our mission, to bring you the cars, cars of the, of the future. future. The 1985 two-door Starship Skyhawk. Buick's fully computerized sporty sedan with automatic transmission, power steering and brakes, steel belted radials, remote mirror and more. Only $77.95. Plus Andy Sims' exclusive Starship decor package. The 85 Buick Skyhawk. The Starship Specials. Deals that are out of this world at Andy Sims Buick. Broadview Road, Broadview Heights. My agent needed a Zoom copier. Naturally, he didn't want to spend a lot, so he got Minolta's Compact Beta 350Z. When I get a rave review, he makes great big copies. When I get a small-minded review, he makes little tiny copies. And it's easy to get any size in between and in a variety of colors. Of course, I don't save my reviews. My agent wants them. I want them. I don't want them. New Beta 350Z Zoom copier at a very small price. Meritech, office technology for business and industry. Back, back live at Lance Gymnasium. There you see the score. Cleveland State leading with 12.35 remaining. The turnover situation. Eastern Illinois being bothered by the Viking press. Uh, five turnovers to three. And points on those turnovers. Eight to nothing. So Cleveland State has converted four of those turnovers into baskets. Crawford trying to drive. And I don't know. It appears to me that... They're letting them play, but I think a little bit too much. A good block by Crawford, and I don't believe it. He's called for the foul. I can't believe that call myself. Bob was at least two feet away from the offensive personnel when he went up for that shot. I thought it was a good block. Let's take a look at it. And draw a strong move to the hoop. As you see, clear daylight in between the two personnel, but it was a foul call. Dirk Dandroff at the line for two shots, and I think we'd better start checking ourselves and get our whistles out just in case because I have seen a lot of body pushing of, away from the basketball, and nothing is being called, and uh, it looks like another inconsistent job, and that's something that, unfortunately, I have to say has not uh, made this conference look good so far this year. Clinton Ramsey is fouled by Androff. Good pass, dangerous pass, but Ramsey nevertheless managed to get it. And Androff is called for his second personal. We can tell on this free throw line right now if the injury that he has stained the other night will bother him. Uh, normally he would make that shot and be at the line for the third point. I think he's all right. Ramsey had 26 points versus Eastern Illinois in that first conference game for both schools back on January 8th of 85. And Ramsey has two points now. A 76% free, free throw shooter coming into the ball game. Clinton, by the way, only scored two points in that loss to Southwest Missouri State last Saturday. That snapped a streak of 25 consecutive games in which he had scored in double figures. Watch Nidig or Androff and Mud, and Dirk Androff is going to get called for the personal now. Well, Eric Check can't it, it's fight. Eric Mud. 
Eric can't fight with Androff under there. The, the weight factor is just too much. I think what he has to Pretty. do is position himself between he and the basketball, and that way he, he won't commit fouls. A 30-pound difference. Mud at 6'7", 230. Androff at 6... Or rather, Mud at 6'7", 200. And Androff at 6'7", 230. Eddie Bryant driving the lane. Goes up against the trees. No good. A Mud coming down with a rebound. And Mud is fouled by Troy Richardson. Our oh, man Mud again. He's... He's probably our best offensive rebounder. As you see, there, a real good offensive positioning under there. Going back up strong, he was fouled on the shot. Mud, his first two free throw attempts of the evening, makes good on the first one. He now has three points on the night. It's 15 to seven. The Vikings on top by eight. Mud makes good on both of them. He's two for two from the line, where he's been shooting 72% this year. It's now 16-7 with 11.23 remaining in the first half of action. The Vikings leading by nine. Underneath Brook has a nice defensive play by Steve Corbin, and now we have a traveling call on Eric Mudd, and it'll be the Panthers basketball. Well, the fans thought it was goaltending because Steve was up in the air that time and slammed the ball to the backboard. It seemed like it was a makeup call by the official. He missed the first one, so he gave him the traveling call. Clinton Ramsey kicked that one out of bounds, so it'll remain the Panthers ball. 11-11 remaining in the first half. 16-7, the Vikings lead. Brook puts the ball in play. You know, the Panthers had to prove that they can hit from the outside, yet they're trying to get the basketball in low. Well, one thing that has been effective for Coach Rick Sanders, Doug Brook hits the basket and makes it a 16-9 ball game. Rick Samuels, somewhere in the early part of the season decided to go with his big lineup with Androff, Neidig, and of course Kevin Duckworth when he was healthy. And that slowed them down somewhat, but nevertheless, it has been effective. They've gone 11 and 4 since that time. And now we have an offensive foul on Eddie Bryant. And I think the best thing for the Vikings to do is just avoid contact at all costs. Well, I think we're trying to win. We don't show patience right now. We're trying to get them 20 points down right now. We have to work on that two points at a time. And I think if we take our time and hit the good open jump shots, we can do that. It's been seven minutes since the Panthers have scored a field goal. Their only points have come from the free throw line. And of course, that's reflected in the 16 to 9 score. Underneath all alone, Richardson. And that breaks the spell. Good patience with the basketball the Panthers had that time. A good back pick from the opposite side of the basketball. That's what created that score. We have played exactly. Ten minutes in this ball game as Eddie Bryant almost lost the basketball there. The score 16 to 11. And in case you're wondering, it has been a slow ball game. A lot of personals have been called. Randy is fouled by John Collins. That was not a popular call with the fans here. Good flash cross the middle by Randy. Up for the shot. The ball was actually blocked, but I think he uh, hit him on the elbow there as he went by. Well, we'll take it any way we uh, can get it. Clinton Ramsey will be at the line for two more free throws. As we mentioned, he leads the Vikings in scoring with an 18-point-per-game average. He now has three. From the line, he is shooting 76%. Ramsey needs 19 points now to break the scoring mark, season scoring mark, for a sophomore. And with those two free throws, he is now 15 points away from that record. 18-11 now, the Vikings by seven with 9.39 remaining in the first half. Collins missing and on the tip three times and the Panthers miss, but underneath we have a whistle and that call is going to be on Vince Richards. That's too many attempts to let them have at, at the offensive boards. We have to box out and be strong under there. Here you see the shot. There's one Panther. Paul Knighty got the line. Makes good on his first attempt. 
He's a 63% uh, free throw shooter, only averaging two points per ball game. Played 12 minutes versus Cleveland State back on January 8th, but did not score. Scores this time, however, and makes the score now 18-13 as Sean Hood back in the ball game gets it underneath. A Womack on the alley-oop from Clinton Ramsey. That was a good alley-oop pass that time from Ramsey. Perfect timing, makes it 20 to 13 in favor of the Vikings with 9-12 remaining. Collins down the corner and he puts it up again. John Collins now with five points and it's a 20 to 15 ball game and the pace is beginning to pick up. Good call by the official, but I thought surely he would give him the two points. Inbounds it goes to Troy Richardson underneath the Collins. Collins high arch, no good, and coming down on the shot. There is a foul called on Vince Richards, and that'll send Paul Knighted to the line once again. And I think, and I don't like to say this, I, I don't like to show a lot of partiality, but I think in this case, this is a typical Homer Paul. Well, what we have to do uh, as a team is not even acknowledge the officials out there. When they make a call, turn your head, walk away, and try to do better next time. Because the more you have conversation with the officials out there, you only get frustrated when they call it the next time down. And I think that frustration showed uh, on Steve Richards or Vince Richards' face on that last foul call. Troy Richardson at the line. He's shooting 71% uh, from there. Made good on his first attempt. He'll get another one. Both teams are now in the bonus situation, so every foul from now on will be a one-and-one -one situation. Elgin Womack with another rebound, having a fantastic game. Steal by Troy Richardson. Underneath Collins, too hard off the glass, and Warren Bradley now in the ball game, coming down with the rebound. I thought it was a little walk on the shot also, but it wasn't called, so we have to rebound. Let's see what we can do with it. The Panthers in a man-to-man. -man. As Clinton Smith puts it up and in, he has four points now. It's a 22-16 Viking lead, and the Panthers throw the ball away, but it was last touched by a Viking, so it'll be still Eastern Illinois basketball. 8.04 remaining in the first half. This has been a slow first half, but we have a ton of fouls that have been called. The Panthers break the press successfully. In that last game between these two clubs, Coach Samuels went with a smaller lineup, and he found out that he did not have the speed to go with the uh, Vikings' much faster men, and that was one of the things that Rick Kilby pointed out to me as we were sitting by watching the ball game. Elgin Womack on the turnaround, and Elgin Womack now has four points, making it a 24-16 ball game. The Vikings with an eight-point lead. They have held the lead for about the entire ball game. Now, this is the time you tell your ball club, let's hold one time, that we can go down and score. We'll get the crowd out of this game. The crowd has kept them in this game so far. This gym here at uh, Eastern Illinois University, the Lance Gymnasium, holds 6,500. But even when they have three or 4,000 here, it sounds like a packed house. That foul was on Troy Richardson, his second of the contest, and that'll send Sean Hood to the free throw line for a one and one. Now, if we can go down and score these two uh, buckets on this one and one, give us a 10 point lead, try to take the crowd out of this game and then come down and hold again on defense, I think that'll, that'll put us up. Uh, mentally, if not by point-wise. Sean Hood, as you saw the graphic, the assist leader for the Vikings. He's only averaging 4.1 points per ball game, shooting 67% from the free throw line. He is one for one there tonight. 
Let's see if he can make it two for two. He does. And that makes it a 10-point lead for the Vikings. And there's an official timeout on the floor with 6.57 remaining in the first half. The score, Cleveland State 26, Eastern Illinois 16. We'll be back. Strength. Pride. Tradition. For centuries, the Clydesdales have been known as a special breed. Today, the Clydesdales symbolize Budweiser's dedication to quality, superior ingredients, exclusive beechwood aging, and a distinctively clean, crisp taste only Budweiser can offer. Quality taste, because this Bud's for you. Build savings by doing the job yourself. Build confidence at James Lumber, the one-stop lumber store. All your building supplies are at James Lumber. We supply the whole job, from the floor on up to the ceiling. And James Lumber has a delivery and cutting service. James Lumber starts the job off on the right foot. For savings and convenience, let James Lumber help you do the job yourself. Family operated for 35 years at 12565 Prospect in Strongsville. James Lumber, we build confidence. From the field, Eastern is only 5 of 20 for 25%, and uh, Cleveland State 7 of 16, and that's at the 657 mark where we are right now. And there's your percentages, 43% on that 7 of 16 performance for the Cleveland State Vikings. Stay tuned for more live sports coverage in March when Channel 61 takes you to Public Hall for the 57th annual Northeast Ohio Golden Gloves Boxing Championships. That is Tuesday, March 19th at 7 p.m. And, of course, we should remind you that this is the final regular season telecast of Cleveland State basketball, and we certainly have enjoyed bringing you these ball games. Now, the Vikings will have one more home game. That is Saturday, March 2nd, against Valparaiso University and depending on the outcome here tonight that will be a very crucial game for the Vikings it's a must win situation as Clinton Smith has just been called for his third personal foul and very quickly Clinton Ramsey gets off the bench to replace Smith in the lineup it'll be John Collins at the line for a one and one situation Collins so far one of two from the free throw line this evening you know, I've seen tougher fouls than that. That was a, a little push foul that the officials called. The way they're banging around underneath, I can't see how you will call that one. Collins missing on the attempt, so fortunately we dodge a bullet of sorts. But nevertheless, Clinton Smith is sort of being taken out of this ball game with, all, with three personal fouls and still a good portion of the ball game to go. Smith leads the... Vikings in minutes played as Sean Hood puts one up Sean in there. Sean Hood takes charge of the offense there, and now it's a 12-point Viking lead with 6-14 remaining in the first half of action. Now, I made mention of that earlier that that's what we need Sean Hood to do, to penetrate and cause some problems for the Panthers. Watch the action away from the ball if you can on your screen because Nidig and uh, Womack are having a little bit of bump and run as are Eric Mudd and Dirk Androff. Doug Crook putting one up, missing, and Vince Richards coming down for the Vikings with the basketball. Richards pulls up and pops. Good head, good head movements by Richards to see the whole floor to know that he was open for that shot. Richards now with four points. It is a 30 to 16 Viking lead with five and a half minutes remaining in the first half. And this will give us a chance to remind you to be sure to catch Bruce Lee Week all this week on Channel 61's 8 p.m. movie. Bruce Lee Week begins tomorrow night with the classic Return of the Dragon. Here we see Richardson. He watches the whole floor. You see, take a look at the whole floor. Up for the jump shot, a smooth jump shot into the hoop. Vince Richards, who scored 16 points versus Eastern Illinois back on January 8th, 
with those four points. He now has 807 career points and needs just 13 more to pass Mike Sweeney into 16th place in the all-time scoring list for Cleveland State. Doug, you got to get opposite Troy. We got to get a guy in the middle, okay? We can't hit the middle. We got to go across the opposite guard. Right? Right? Transition offense. Let's go. Put the ball in scared. Show us the And there you heard the words of Coach Rick Samuels in his fifth year here at Eastern Illinois. Was 58 and 55 going into the season. Now 73 and 64 by virtue of their 15 and 9 record this season. Illinois' last field goal was at the 9.08 mark. Since then, they have gone two for four from the free throw line. And the score right now stands at 30 to 16 with five and a half minutes remaining in the first half. What he told his players, try to get the basketball in the middle of the court. We can break the press. If not, let's go to the opposite. And there was stuff. That's the way to break the press. And that brings the crowd up to its feet. The 30 to 18 ball game. Panthers still trailed by 12. Womack going up, and he is fouled by Nidig. And Nidig commits his first personal. The Big E will go to the line for his first two free throw attempts of the evening. That was a good move on Elgin's part that time. He felt the pressure. You know which way to go on that. The pressure was to the outside, so he went to the inside toward the baseline. Good find move. And we mention it time after time. With more playing time, Elgin Womack continues to impress. I think we've shot more free throws tonight in this first half as the Vikings did all of Southwest, uh, Southwest Louisiana, I mean Missouri, Saturday. They only shot uh, 11 free throws. Elgin Womack now with six points makes it a 32-18 ball game. We have less than five minutes remaining in what has been an interminably long first half, almost 45 minutes. Nice block by Womack of a shot attempt by John Collins. And the fans behind us want the goaltending call. Clinton Ramsey is called for the offensive foul, and I don't believe that the basket is going to count. So Ramsey now with two personals. Here's the block again. See, Walmart came from behind. He didn't block the ball away from the hoop, so I think that's why they didn't call it a goaltender. The Panthers with the basketball. Troy Richardson being guarded by Vince Richards. And they finally break the press. Crook backs up against Womack, and Eric Mudd comes down with the rebound. Vikings with a chance to increase it up to 16, and Richards missing, but Womack with the rebound also has it taken away, and the ball was last touched by Cleveland State. It'll be the Panthers basketball. Good offensive boys that time by Womack. A little strong on the shot. He thought he was uh, drawing a foul. No one was there for the foul. The ball went over the hoop. Well, if you looked at that, that was very obviously a foul, and uh, somehow or other, I believe that we are getting short change. Nightig against Womack misses, and the ball goes out of bounds. It'll be Eastern Illinois' ball. You know, we can't look for the officials to give us anything. We have to really play hard out here. We have an official timeout on the floor with three minutes, 59 seconds remaining in the first half of action. The score, Cleveland State 32, Eastern Illinois 18. We'll be back. The enemy. Rain. A mere one-eighth inch can float your car off the road. Thus the rationale for Vector. Goodyear's unique all-season radio. So advanced. It's crisscross tread actually pumps away water to help more tire and your car stay on the road. The Goodyear Vector. It simply performs like no other tire in the world. When you rent to own a Curtis Mathis TV or a VCR, is it as easy as they say? I just made one phone call. Got a call back about 15 minutes later and they asked me when I wanted my TV. Why Curtis Mathis? Well, Curtis Mathis has a four-year 
warranty and I just believe it's a better TV. And James Suber, what do you think of our Rent to Own program? Great, fantastic. For the best that money can rent, call Curtis Mathis now. That. Let's look at that last charging foul on Ramsey. As you see, he went straight up for the hoop. The defensive personnel was stationary. The reason they didn't give him that bucket, the ball was still in his hand when he made the charge. And this is something that I think that we should get away from. Don't question the referee. Don't even talk to the referee because you're only going to be frustrated the next time you come down and a bad call is called against you. Well, believe it or not, in spite of the fact that we have had more fouls called against us, uh, we, uh, Cleveland State is uh, four of nine in uh, backcourt shooting and uh, Eastern Illinois two of 11. But as I started to say, uh, the Vikings have been to the line more and John Collins there with a nice elbow and a basket getting away with it. So. It's 32 20 right now. The Vikings lead by 12. Elgin Womack coming down with the rebound, going up, but he is going to be called for a traveling violation. And that is going to give the ball back to Eastern Illinois. Seems like we can't get any fouls underneath when we get the offensive boards. I thought he was pushed that time. Now there is a traveling violation. That is a position. Uh, inbounds play that is a spot violation so that's going to get the ball back to Cleveland State Androff began to move up and down the baseline underneath to Womack Womack up missing and Knighted coming down with the rebound and who are we going to call this time oh this time it's on Eric Mudd all right like pick a green jersey and whistle and blow the whistle and I hate to say it but it certainly seems that way we're only one getting called for foul underneath and I see pushing and shoving by both teams underneath. So if you're going to let them play, let them play. Nidig will have a one and one. He's two or two of two from the free throw line so far this evening, shooting 63% missing on that attempt. And as I mentioned earlier, in spite of the fact that we have been called for more personals, the Vikings have been to the line. 14 times and John Collins just lost that one out of frustration came over and uh, slammed by note cards here in front of me. We're trying to dribble through that press. We have to pass ahead on that press to get the ball past those first two defenders. We may have some mismatches underneath. Vikings going now into the spread offense. Cleveland State has never won here at Lance Gym. The series between these two clubs dates back to 1966 when they were both Division II schools and the Vikings helped to dedicate this gym and they lost at that point 97 to 83. The next time they met was at the Cleveland Arena back uh, the following year 67 68 in the Cleveland Invitational Tournament. Cleveland State won 85 80. Last year Eastern won both games between the two schools. And on the backcourt violation, the ball is going to go back to Eastern Illinois. The Vikings run a minute off the clock, but get nothing out of it. With 2.27 remaining, it'll be Eastern's ball with a 32-20 Viking lead. That was miscommunication that time with Ranzit and, and Richards. That time, he thought uh, Richards, uh, Kevin was going to dribble the ball. Clint was going to dribble the ball all the way to the middle, but he didn't. One dribble and picked it up. Cleveland State has committed more turnovers as you saw in the graphic there and Jerry Strickland who is now in the ball game for Eastern Illinois just got called for the turnover losing the ball out of bounds and with 215 remaining in the first half the Vikings have the basketball and once again they're going to try to spread it out as the fans here pick up on the chant they were yelling that this was boring before but Boring or not, the Vikings are going to use this strategy, hopefully to get some fouls called in their favor. And that time they do. The officials finally called a foul against Eastern Illinois, and Jerry Strickland was whistled for that one. 
and that'll send Clinton Ramsey to the line. Ramsey with four points on the evening. I think what the fans are really upset about, they've seen harder contact out there without any fouls called for them to call that type of foul. They were really surprised. Well, I don't blame them for getting angry, but then, of course, on the other hand, we've had the same thing happen against us. Ramsey, perfect. Ramsey now five for five. And the Vikings, if my stats are correct, 15 of 15 from the free throw line so far this evening. 16 of 16 now as Ramsey is six for six. Steve, Steve Corbin in the lineup now for the Vikings, number 21, replacing Vince Richards in the lineup. It's a 34-20 Viking lead with a minute 46 to go in the first half of action. And this first half is now at the 50-minute mark. We're 10 minutes short of an hour. And in a college basketball game, that is entirely too, too long. But we all know the reason why. Vikings in a man-to-man. -man. And we're going to get a whistle, and it's going to be on Elgin Womack. I saw that coming. Womack and Nidig were leaning on each other. And when in doubt, blow the whistle on the visitor. <laughs> because the officials do have to come back here and work. That's true. Nidig. Now with five points, he's three of four from the free throw line. As you see the big crowd here at Lance Gymnasium. Very partial crowd, of course. Knighting now four of five. It's a 34-22 ball game. The Vikings lead by 12. They have never trailed in this ball game. It was tied 2-2 in the early moments. And I believe once again at four. Vikings haven't... Uh, had a field goal in about four and a half minutes. The last time they scored was at the 5.33 mark. You know, I think this is a good strategy here. That's why the rules are uh, governed so you can play this type of game. You know, it's, it's funny, when Cleveland State played this type of game, everyone boos and, and hisses. But you see a North Carolina do this, and they're in the top 10, so it couldn't be all bad. Well, of course, this year, North Carolina has not been able to do that as often because the Atlantic Coast Conference plays that 45-second clock. The conferences had a choice, and here in, uh, in the MQ8, Elton Womack going for the stuff, and Womack now with eight points, tying him with his career high. I think that'll quiet the fans down for a minute. That is the end of the first half of action with the score, Cleveland State 36, Eastern Illinois 22. We'll be back with a halftime wrap-up right after this. Introducing the new home. It'll be the Vikings ball. In March, Channel 61 Sports will bring you all the excitement of high school championship basketball, girls and boys, Class A, AA, and AAA. Battle for the top spot in the state, March 23rd and 30th. And all those games will be brought to you here on WCLQ. So even though Cleveland State basketball is over as far as TV is concerned for the regular season, we will still have much, much more exciting basketball action here for you on TV 61. John Collins on that last basket cut the CSU lead down to 12 once again at 46-34. Eric Mudd, though, gets it back up to 14. Mudd with his sixth point of the evening. I think our back line has to get back on defense all the way. We can't let them have layups once they penetrate and go to the hoop. And Mudd has just been whistled for his fourth personal foul. And Warren Bradley quickly getting up off the bench and coming in to replace Eric. A fine pass that time by, by I think that was Collings. You know, sometimes you have to know your personnel, and I don't think that he was coming in too fast to make that layup. You should let him have it. 
Doug Crook from long range missing, but Paul Neidig underneath with the rebound and the lay-in. And Neidig now has eight points. It is 48-36. Coach Kevin Mackey is going to run out of subs pretty soon. The only guy that hasn't played so far is Tyrone Kingwood. And pretty soon he's going to have to see action. Elgin Womack in double figures. That is the high of his career. Ten points for the Big E, the sophomore from Cambria Heights, New York, who came into the ball game only averaging 2.2 points per game. But then again, he has not seen that much action. So what the defense is doing, they're playing to that side and let him go to the strong hand to his left. So he's going to make those shots. And we have a whistle underneath. And that will be on Warren Bradley. You see a reach in foul that time by Warren. If he had held his ground with his hands straight up, I don't think that foul would have been called. OK, it'll be Dirk Androff at the line. Androff two for two from the free throw line so far tonight. He is now three for three. Androff, a 72% free throw shooter, makes good on the second shot. He's four for four from the free throw line. And we have an official timeout on the floor with 13-20 remaining in the ball game. The score, Cleveland State 50, Eastern Illinois 38. This is the story of the Andy Sims Starship Specials. Our mission, to bring you the cars of the future. The 1985 two-door Starship Skyhawk, Buick's fully computerized sporty sedan with automatic transmission, power steering and brakes, steel belted radials, remote mirror, and more. Only $77.95. Plus Andy Sims' exclusive Starship decor package, the 85 Buick Skyhawk, the Starship Specials. Deals that are out of this world at Andy Sims Buick, Broadview Road, Broadview Heights. I know. These are for typing that report. <laughs> Again. <laughs> Miss Smith, please type in one and see that you changed. Please. No matter what type of boss you have, with a Panasonic 708 electronic typewriter, you won't have to retype. It's 8K memory stores what you've typed. Type in the corrections, and it does the retyping for you. So when your boss Where's requests the word. Where's that? Letter. Thank you. It's time for a Panasonic. Available at Meritech, office technology for business and industry, 459-8333. Back, back live at Lance Gymnasium, there you see the Vikings coach, Kevin Mackey, his career record, 32 and 23, and what a fine turnaround job Kevin Mackey has done so far this year, bringing the team back from 8 and 20 two seasons ago, his first, uh, or his last, the last year for Ray Derringer. Of course, 14 and 16 last year, 18 and 7 so far this season. Well, he has his players really believing in his system. Uh, he substitutes freely. Everyone has a chance to really participate and feel a part of this team. And I think that's the key. John Hood just had a shot block, but Warren Bradley up strong with a power move on the rebound. Warren Bradley with his first two points of the evening. Up to that point, Cleveland State had been 7 of 13 on field goals from the... Uh, in the second half, Eastern Illinois 5 of 10. And we now have a 52 to 38 ball game with 12.48 to go. Defensively, Clinton Ramsey on Collins. And we have a goaltending call on that one. As Dirk Androff put it up, Elgin Womack blocked it. As we see the pass go in, first I see an offensive charge. Although there was a goaltending, I thought it was an offensive charge before. Well, the Vikings again with that 12-point lead, which they have maintained pretty much throughout the ball game. Steve Corbin and Sean Hood at the guards for the Vikings, and Corbin going all the way, and oh, oh no! If I sound a little biased, I do apologize to those of you that may be offended, but we are witnessing a ball game here tonight that the officials appear to be missing. That is Corbin's first personal. And it gives the ball back to Eastern Illinois with a chance to cut the Viking lead down to 10. It's 52-40 right now with 12.05 remaining. 
Nice defensive work by the Vikings underneath, but for once we get a break and the Vikings are going to get the ball. They rule that the Eastern Illinois player was out of bounds when he touched it. Three on one, Clinton Ramsey off the glass. Good, Ramsey now with 12 points. Not bad for a guy with a slight concussion, Bingo. No, it's not. I think anytime you got that competitive spirit, it'll bring everything out of you, injuries and all. Brook, of course, counters with the basket is 44-42. Now, as a team, what we have to do now is be patient, get a real good shot, a good scoring opportunity, and if we score, then we have to play our best defense the next couple of times down and try to keep them from scoring. Getting back to Clinton Ramsey for a minute, I was asking some of the guys earlier today, hey, do you think Ramsey will play? They said, if he can walk, he can play. Warren Bradley just put that one up and in, and he was called, he was fouled by Paul Neidig, and that's Neidig's second personal of the ball game. Warren Bradley will be at the line for his first attempt of the evening. He's shooting 50% from the free throw line. That was a good head and shoulders fake by Warren that time. He felt that if he went up quickly with the basketball, he could have had it blocked, so he got a good head and shoulder fake that went up strong with the hoop. There you see Warren Bradley, four points on the evening. He has a chance to make it five. That's a good, a little bit too hard off the glass, and that is the first free throw the Vikings have missed so far this evening. It's the first time they've been to the line this half. Oh, Troy Richardson with a basket. He now has five. It is 56-44. Once again, the Viking lead cut to 12. We have less than 11 minutes remaining in the ball game. want to take the opportunity somewhere during the course of the game as we go along to thank all the people who have made these Channel 61 telecasts possible. Among them, of course, the people at the Cleveland State University Athletic Department, Athletic Director Bob Busby, and of course, all the help that was given to us by Sports Information Director Merle Levin. We uh, really appreciate it. Warren Bradley with the basket there, now with six points, and I think Warren Bradley has hit his career high. Elgin Womack with the save, and I bet we're gonna get a traveling call. How did I guess that? In all fairness, that time when Womack went down with the basketball, he did move both feet, so it was a traveling call. Good hustle for the basketball. As you see now, as he goes down, should have been a jump ball, though. That's why I'm saying. <laughs> and that is John Collins from the corner. Collins now with 15 points. It is 58-46. The Vikings maintain that 12-point lead as Sean Hood brings the ball down, being guarded by Norm Evans, who is now in the ball game. Clinton Ramsey missing this time off the glass, but Steve Corbin saving it, and we have a foul on Warren Bradley, and that'll give the ball back to Eastern Illinois. The Panthers now in the bonus situation, so that'll send John Collins to the free throw line. Collins, one of three from the free throw line so far this evening. He is the leading scorer for the Panthers tonight and on the season. Has 15 points tonight, 18.4 point per game average on the season. He makes good on the first one. He'll get another one. Well, they finally broke that 12 point mark. And we have less than 10 minutes to go, 9.38 to be exact. Eddie Bryant now in the ball game, replacing Sean Hood. Your graphic shows John Collins with 14. I have him for 16, but I could be wrong. My stats are very unofficial. We have an official timeout on the floor with the score. Cleveland State 58, Eastern Illinois 48, and we'll be back. This Bud's for everyone who scrapes it, sprays it, and lays it on smooth. This Bud's for you, for all you do. The King of Beers is coming through. 
Yeah, just for you. That distinctively clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. Pour all you do. This Bud's for you. Sandwich? Croissant. There really is a difference. Wake up! Arby's croissant is better than a little crescent-shaped roll. Wake up! To Arby's, if you want an authentic croissant. Wake up! Arby's croissant is lighter, flakier, more buttery. Wake up! To your fresh-cooked favorites on a real French croissant. Wake up! To Arby's! Come on, you are hungry for an authentic croissant. Go right where you belong. Wake up! There you see some of the young Panther fans that uh, are here to witness this ball game tonight between Cleveland State and Eastern Illinois. So far, field goal percentages. Cleveland State, 13 of 21 from the field for a 61.9%. Eastern Illinois, 7 of 12 for a 58.3%. That is, of course, in the second half only. 58-48 right now. The Vikings, the 10-point lead, which had been 12 for most of the second half, but the Panthers creeping ever so close in an AMQ8 contest. No lead is safe as we have seen throughout the season. But officiating also has been somewhat inconsistent, and that is the one downfall that I would say uh, we, we have experienced. And again, we don't want to belabor the point, but if you were to rate this game, as far as the worst officiated ball games we have seen so far this season on television, this has to be among the top three. And I think my partner Bingo Smith would agree with me that uh, Maryland and the first Kent State game. I think so, especially the Kent State game. Uh, that was a weird game all the way around. With four minutes left in the contest, Western Illinois leading Illinois Chicago 63 to 55. And with 10 minutes left at Valparaiso, it is Southwest Missouri State leading Valparaiso, 56 to 50. A whistle and a foul on Norm Evans of the Panthers, and that'll give the ball back to Cleveland State. 8.44 remaining in this ball game, and we have a Viking lead, and Elgin Womack loses the ball out of bounds, and that'll give the ball back to Eastern Illinois. Vikings led 36-22 at halftime, but that lead of 14 points has now been cut to 10, and possibly 8 as the Panthers have the basketball. Eddie Bryant has just been called for a foul, and Eddie shouldn't be surprised. Well, it was a questionable call. I think from the angle that the official had at that time, he really couldn't see if it was a foul or not. But anytime someone goes from behind, they're going to give him the benefit of the doubt to the offense. Bob Crawford has come back in the ball game with eight and a half minutes remaining. He has three personals. So Crawford can afford to give up one. Norm Evans show, throws a brick up at the basket. And Eddie Bryant brings the ball into the front court. And fast Eddie Bryant, now being guarded by Norm Evans, is going to take as much time off the clock as he can. And pretty soon he's got to get the ball away, and he does to Clinton Ramsey. And now the Vikings are going to play with it a while and hope to get a foul call. If well, it is we'll an offensive foul, let's see. A five-second call now. They call a five-second call on that. Now they're going to run into each other. Okay, two I, I was afraid for a moment there he's going to call a technical on the other official and uh, give Eastern Illinois the, the basket, the shot. Okay, Eastern Illinois' ball. They've had a lot of chances to cut this lead and haven't been able to capitalize on it. 7.54 remaining as John Collins drives. Bob Crawford rejects it. It will still be Eastern Illinois' ball, but that uh, kind of a play, of course, tends to intimidate, and I think that the Panthers will think twice before driving into the basket. Good block that time by Crawford. Straight up in the air. 
Waited until the ball got to his peak, swiped it in the stands. Underneath, uh, Dirk Androff puts up the basket. And we also have a whistle on the play, so Androff gets two, and Eric Mudd has just fouled out of the ball game. A good pass by the Panthers. I wouldn't have called that call. Well, with seven and a half minutes to go now, Warren Bradley has come in, and this is something interesting we're going to have to keep track of. Mud fouls out with 7.29 remaining. And we have Clinton Smith with four. Of course, Clinton is not in the ball game. Bob Crawford has three. He can afford to give up one more. And we'll see what this does to the Viking lead. Dirk Androff makes a good on the three-point play. He's not perfect from the foul line. Five for five, 11 points, and it's a 58-51 Viking lead. It has been cut to seven. I think we have to go muscle with muscle. We have to put Warmack on him because he's a little strong under there and he's taking advantage. That will still be Cleveland State's basketball. 7-11 remaining in the contest. And Troy Richardson coming back in, replacing Doug Crook in the Panther lineup. Vikings will get the ball underneath their basket. Eddie Bryant to put the ball in play. And the pass goes in, and good play by Eddie Bryant. Knocked it off of Dirk Androff's knee, and that'll still be Cleveland State basketball. That was a smart play that time by Eddie Bryant. Time was running out. They were almost on the four seconds, and he made a smart move by throwing it off the defensive personnel. Vikings had a 14-point lead at the 10.55 mark. They have not scored in that time. Bob Crawford just broke the spell. Eastern Illinois had scored seven unanswered points up to that time, and this time it is going to be a whistle, and I think the official Jerry Seibert, or Paul Birchfeld, can have his choice. That'll be on Warren Bradley. As you saw in that instant replay, Crawford was pushed from behind by a Panther player in the path of the other Panther player that caused the foul. Okay, we have an official timeout on the floor with 6.59 remaining in the contest. The score, Cleveland State 60, Eastern Illinois 51. We'll be back. The enemy, rain. A mere one-eighth inch can float your car off the road. Thus the rationale for Vector, Goodyear's unique all-season radio, so advanced its crisscross tread actually pumps away water to help more tire and your car stay on the road. The Goodyear Vector. It simply performs like no other tire in the world. Nancy Dassault with big news from Revco. It's the biggest news since Revco first introduced discount pricing 25 years ago. Revco has just lowered its prices on over 3,000 products, including the brand names you want most. Prices that will save you more than ever before. You'll find the lowest possible discount prices on all your favorite cosmetics, fragrances, greeting cards, even pet supplies. Stop by your neighborhood Revco today and see for yourself. In the last four minutes, Eastern Illinois has outscored Cleveland State 9-4. to four. And uh, if you want to keep a uh, track of the personal fouls called, Cleveland State has been called for 25 personals, Eastern Illinois 14. As you probably saw, the guy with the uh, orange and green, that's their super fan. That's our Eddie Nara. Troy Richardson at the line for a one and one, and uh, his first one up and missed. So that is helping us. It was a two shot foul. My apologies. Richardson with five points. He's a 71% free throw shooter. He makes good on the second one, and so 
He is two for four from the free throw line and is a now 60 to 52 ball game. The Vikings leading by eight. Eddie Bryant taking it up and that is going to be a traveling violation. So another turnover for the Vikings. Give the ball back to Eastern Illinois with 646 remaining. I think Eddie was surprised to get so close to the hoop and wide open. I know they want to try to delay the basketball for a while, but he was so wide open, he made the travel because he didn't know what to do at that point. John Collins now with 19 points at 60 to 54. The Viking lead has been cut to six. And I remind you that the first time these two teams met this season, they went into overtime. And at that time, the Vikings scored the first 10 points in the overtime period, ended up winning 83-72. But also then, the Panthers had Dirk, uh, rather Kevin Duckworth. Warren Bradley is hammered by Paul Knightig, and for once, it was so obvious they had to call it. Duckworth not playing tonight because of a broken hand. Also, Tim Dykstra, who played in that ball game, is no longer with the team after a uh, broken wrist has sidelined him for the rest of the season. It was a fine pass that time from Ramsey to Bradley. I thought he should have had a good head and shoulder fake. Warren Bradley 0 for 2 from the free throw line so far tonight. He missed on this one. Crawford charged in there and tried to follow it up, but couldn't do it. And the Panthers come away with the basketball. Six minutes remaining in the ball game. Six points, the Viking lead. Underneath, Paul Knightig missing. And of course, we're going to get a whistle. And it's on Warren Bradley. He now has four. Seems like any time the Panthers go underneath, there's a foul call one way or the other. Well, is that just a nervous twitch on Rick Samuel's face, or is he just trying to suppress a little smirk? Well, I think his talk at halftime had something to do with the calls this second half. You know, those were good plays underneath the blocks that I thought, and they call foul. And Androff makes good on both. He now is seven for seven from the free throw line, a total of 13 points. The Vikings, for once, get a call, and that'll be on Norm Evans. Evans with his second personal, and Eddie Bryant will be at the line for a one and one. The Vikings, who have had leads of as many as 18 points, have now seen the lead shrink to four. This will test the character of the team. When they see a big lead, evaporate like that because of the calls with the officiating. Eddie Bryant missing on the attempt. He's now two for three from the free throw line. Five and a half minutes remaining in the ball game. Troy Richardson driving, missing, and on the rebound. It is knocked out of bounds by Warren Bradley, and it'll be Eastern Illinois basketball. And I must give the Panthers credit. They're really psyched up. They're playing their best. They're playing with hearts right now. Of course, it helps to know that you're going to go in there and bully your way under the boards and not get called for personal fouls. And now we finally oh, get an offensive call. Both official call. called two things there. One called a charge and one called a, a, a blocking. So now let's see what's going to happen. I don't think these two guys are officiating the same ball game. And now let's see who's going to rule. How can you have a double foul? There's no way. <laughs> you mean to say they did it at the same time? Oh, no way. I've never heard of that. <laughs> well, the, the call is in the book, but that one was so obvious. So Bob Crawford is whistled for his fourth personal. What I'm saying, Alan, you can have a double foul, but on that 
charging call right there. One official has to overrule, and I think the, the official that was closer to the play that called the charge should have overruled the other official. Well, folks, if you want to know their names, it's Jerry Seibert and Paul Birchfield. Remember those two. And there is Paul Knighted with his 10th point of the night. And it is now a 60 to 58 ball game. The Vikings 18 point lead at one time has shrunk to two. Just keep your poise and things will work out. If you play smart, you gotta play smart though. Crawford missing, Warren Bradley coming down with the rebound, gets hammered underneath. We don't have a basket. I don't believe this. Let's see what the call is. I think it's on Crawford. Nope. It is on Bob Crawford. The thing about that call, that is as five. you see, the official that made the call was under the hoop. He had three or four players in his line of view. How could he make that call? Cleveland State has not scored in the last two minutes of the ball game. It was at 7.07 mark when they last scored. Dirk Androff will be at the line for a one and one. Bob Crawford has fouled out of the ball game and nobody has made him aware of it yet. Elgin Womack coming back into the contest. And I have never seen worse officiating in my life. I, I have to say this, and I know that we are supposed to be objective and unbiased and so forth, but you have to call it as you see it. And finally, Androff misses after going seven for seven from the free throw line. And the Vikings still with a two point lead and Paul Knightage gets called for a personal foul. He now has four. I guess Paul said, why, why take it out on me? I thought for a minute when he held up 5-0 that it was going to be on Elgin Womack. Clinton Ramsey at the line makes good on his first attempt. He'll get another one. Ramsey seven for seven from the free throw line. It's a 61-58 Viking lead with 4.51 to go. And Ramsey, perfect, eight for eight and 14 points. A four-point Viking lead. And the Vikings now in a zone defense, hands held high. And Eastern Illinois certainly has fought back bravely, but not to take anything away from them. They have certainly had help from the men in the striped shirts tonight. Troy Richardson is on the shot attempt. Was fouled by Eddie Bryant. That is five on, or rather three on Eddie and will send Richardson to the line. Richardson with six points so far tonight. You're watching Cleveland State Basketball on WCLQ. Richardson missing on the shot. He's two for five. The Vikings with the basketball, and Vince Richards loses it. Richardson comes away with it. 4.16 to go in the ball game, folks. It's not over by a long shot. Vikings will host Valparaiso at home. Crook from long range puts it up and in. 12 points for Doug Crook. It's a 62 to 60 Viking lead. The Eastern Illinois Panthers have not been this close since the beginning of the ball game. A little patience now. Get that good open jump shot. And get the ball in the hands of someone who could do something with it. There you go. And that's the man. 16 points for Clinton Ramsey. He leads the Vikings in scoring. Now let's play real hard, nose-to-nose -nose defense here. Let's hold them, let's get that, off, that defensive rebound, and then we can come down and let the air out of uh, a couple of seconds and get another good shot. Again, John Collins from long range. He has 21 points. 
And the lead is once again two points for Cleveland State, 64-62. We have three minutes and 10 seconds left in the ball game. The crowd here at Lance Gymnasium on its feet, and the band, of course, helping them along, and Clinton Ramsey finds himself wide open. He now has 18 points, and I think that if he plays this way with a concussion, I don't want to ever see him get healthy again. Doug Crook shooting from long range, and Crook is countering with the outside shot. 2.39 remaining. The Vikings have maintained that two-point lead. There it is on the free throw shooting so far. As you can see, the second half has not been as good for the Vikings, but again, look at the large difference. Underneath, great pass by Clinton Ramsey to Clinton Smith. Eight points for Smitty, and now it's a four-point Viking lead once again. Good heads up play that time by Clinton's, both Clintons. That time Ramsey with the pass and Smith with the good back door move. Doug Crook going to try it again. This time he misses, and the Vikings come away with the rebound, and more importantly, no whistle was called. Eddie Bryant bringing the ball through a whole host of Panthers, and the Vikings could really make hay here. With a minute 48 to go, they have a four-point lead. You don't have to be in a hurry right now. We have a lead. Let's get that good shot again. A smart, a smart playing from the Vikings again is what we need. And now we get a whistle. Troy Richardson being whistled for his fourth personal. And that'll put Vince Richards at the line. Check it, Eddie Bryant. Here's the back door with Clinton Smith. You see Ramsey, a good pivot move. Smith back door in for two. A great give and go. Eddie Bryant, two for three from the free throw line tonight. Pressure free throws if there ever were any. Good. Three points for Eddie Bryant. All three have come from the free throw line. See, Eddie, this is no pressure. As you know, he won a couple ball games with the last second shot. So I don't think the fans would pressure him here. Puts good. Puts both of them in. Eddie Bryant now with four points. The Vikings now with a six-point lead and a minute and 26 seconds to go. Roy Richardson missing underneath. And they're going to call Nidig for it. I don't believe it. And that is five personals on Paul Nidig. He has fouled out of the ball game. Here's the shot again. That time, Elgin made him kind of change his shot. Nidig did come over Ranzi's back. So Paul Nidig is now out of the ball game. He doesn't want to leave. And now he's encouraging the crowd to cheer the Panthers on to victory. Well, he really gave that team a lift tonight. You know, he only averages two points a game, and tonight I think he has eight or ten. So he really came through for them, and he gave them the lift that they needed to keep them in this ball game. And in the ball game now is Steve Hopkins, who hasn't seen action since early in the ball game uh, when he started the contest in place of Kevin Duckworth. Clinton Ramsey at the line. He is eight for eight from there. By the way, Clinton Ramsey had no special hellos tonight, but Clinton Smith did. He wanted to say hello to his mom and dad and his grandmother. Ramsey, perfect. 19 points for the sophomore from Toledo, Maycomber. And uh, that, right now, gives Clinton Ramsey the scoring mark for a sophomore. He is the highest scoring sophomore in the history of Cleveland State and now has 20 points, 10 of 10 from the free throw line. And also, uh, we missed this one, but at 15 points, as Crook misses, 15 points, Ramsey became the uh, 15th all-time scorer in Cleveland State history. The foul called on John Collins. That time and was a, a smart play by uh, Vince Richards that time. They had him boxed in. He covered the basketball up real well, used his pivot foot to keep the guys from really clamping in on him. 
Vince Richards will be at the line. Vince with four points tonight, giving him 807 for his career. The Vikings lead now nine points as Richards is perfect on his first attempt from the free throw line. And in spite of the scare, I think right now the Vikings can breathe a little easier. They have a 10-point lead once again. It is, there is a minute and two remaining, and there we have the clock, so it'll be counting down, and you can count down along with us. Good block by Elgin Womack. And even though Eastern Illinois will keep the basketball, I think that Elgin Womack's performance has been tremendous tonight. Yes, it has. Here you see the block again. A good smart move went straight up. He didn't really reach for the basketball. He let the basketball come to him and a good block. Dirk Androff is fouled by Elgin Womack, but at this point right now, it does not make any difference. And it'll be Dirk Androff at the line. Androff with 13 points so far this evening. The only thing about the foul is stops the clock, and you want that clock to keep ticking. Androff good. He is 8 for 9 from the free throw line so far tonight. 14 points for the 6'7 senior from Decatur's Eisenhower High School. And he makes good on the second one. 15 points for Andra following up on that 26 point performance he had against Valparaiso on Saturday night. So the Vikings now with 44 seconds to go and they call a timeout. They are 40 seconds away from a victory. They are leading 74 to 66. And uh, we'll be back right after this. Hi, I'm Ed Mullinex. Because of the snow, our inventory is not moving fast enough. So we are having a one price sale on over 1,300 new and used cars and trucks. We won't waste your time or money. Our absolute lowest price is the one price and the only price. Our salespeople won't stutter. You don't have to negotiate to save money. 8.8% .8 financing available on over 100 Ranger pickups. Remember, when inventory goes up, prices go down at Mullinex Ford. Of your tired, dull, tacky furniture? Wow! Blow it away! Hey, let Daniel's Furniture replace it with this fine piece country pine living room set, only $249.95. Couch, coffee table, chair, two end tables. I'm holding up five fingers, gang. Count them. Five pieces, $249.95. Guy high savings at Daniel's Furniture. Cleveland East, Cleveland West, and Euclid. The Vikings are 40, second, 40 seconds away from their record 19th victory of the season. They have not won more than uh, 18 games ever in a season. Here are some finals from other places around the league. 76-65, Western Illinois over Illinois Chicago. And Southwest Missouri beating Valparaiso 75-72. Northern Iowa downing Wisconsin Green Bay 79-68. So Western will remain in a tie with the Vikings, both with 10 and 3 records in the AMQ 8 conference. So it'll all come down to next Saturday night when the Vikings take on Valparaiso, while Western Illinois will be at the University of Northern Iowa. So with some help from the Northern Iowa Panthers, we could celebrate our first AMQ 8 conference championship. Yes, we can. You know, Coach Lills, that from uh, Illinois, Chicago, last year when he won this tournament, he won the, the, the conference, rather, he said the winner this year would be 10 and 4. We're going to try to prove him wrong and have 11 and 3 record. Well, let's hope so. And uh, as we mentioned, the Vikings will play Valparaiso at home on Saturday, and their first conference game will be on Wednesday, March 6th at 8 p.m. There will be no television of that game, and we certainly encourage you to get out there and support the Vikings as they look for the AMQ8 conference title. And uh, tickets go on sale Thursday morning at 9 a.m., $5 reserved, $4 general admission, students, faculty, and staff, $2 with a valid ID. Foul on Doug Crook. And I think it's going to take us about two minutes to play the last 22 seconds of basketball here. 76-68. I 
want to personally thank a couple of people, rather a few people, for their work on these telecasts because they have made my job a lot easier, first of all, and foremost, my partner, Bingo Smith, who's really startling insight into this game, has, I think, given a lot of revelation to uh, basketball fans out there and a lot of tips for a lot of you youngsters who have been uh, uh, following the ball games. And, of course, our executive producer, Candace Kramer, our producers, Monica Nettle and not Monica Nettles, and Tom Hoffman, engineering supervisor, Dave Smith, and uh, directors, Bill Payne, and back at the transmitter, Brian Scott, and, of course, can't forget our general manager, Gary Brandt, without whom none of this would have been possible. That's true. <laughs> Certainly don't want to forget the boss. Troy Richardson now with eight points. We have seven seconds. Western, or rather Eastern Illinois has called a timeout. 78 to 70, Cleveland State is leading, and bingo with the last uh, timeout here. Anything that you want to get off your mind in the way of thanks or comments of any other kind? Well, I'd also like to throw my thanks in to all those people that you mentioned, and especially to you. Uh, you're the professional at this game, and I'm learning every day from you, and I really appreciate the help that you've given me this year. And I uh, just hope to see everyone at our last game at home against Valparaiso, and let's bring these guys on to victory. That is the ball game. The final score, 78 to 70. The Cleveland State Vikings have won their record 19th game of the season. They are now 10 and three in the MQ8, and we'll be back with a wrap up right after this. Me and the crew, we're taking this road across Alaska. Working the last frontier, it's different. But when this road's finished and it's on the map, we can say, we did that. It's for guys like T.J. Donahue that we make every Budweiser the best it can be. Beechwood aged and brewed with the kind of pride T.J. puts into his work. So to T.J. and all you guys out there like him, this Bud's for you. When you rent to own a Curtis Mathis TV or a VCR, is it as easy as they say? I just made one phone call, got a call back about 15 minutes later, and they asked me when I wanted my TV. Why Curtis Mathis? Well, Curtis Mathis has a four-year warranty, and I just believe it's a better TV. And James Suber, what do you think of our rent-to-own program? Great. Fantastic. For the best that money can rent, call Curtis Mathis now. Getting blonde was easy. Getting this body wasn't. I push myself because I like how it looks. You know the hardest part? Getting started. Scandinavian makes it easier, especially at 24 bucks a month. Join now. Get 24 months for only $24 a month. Face it. If it came in a bottle, everyone would have a good body. Back live once again here at Lance Gymnasium. There's a lot of celebrating going on, but believe me, I don't know why. But nevertheless, the Vikings of Cleveland State have won their 19th game of the season. They're now 19 and 7. That is a record no Cleveland State team had ever won more than 18 games in a season. And there you see some of the final celebration and congratulations that's going around. As Coach Kevin Mackey is, is congratulating his players, especially Elgin Womack. The big E had eight points, rather 10 points tonight, and we certainly don't want to short Elgin. He played a fine, fine ball game. Clinton Ramsey, the leading scorer with 20 points, and Clinton Smith chipping in with 10. So the three leading scorers for the Vikings, and now it is on to uh, Woodland Gym and a date with Valparaiso on Saturday night. Let's uh, point out the leading scores since we have them on the board here for Eastern Illinois. Doug Crook with fifth, uh, 21, rather with 16, and John Collins with 21, the leading scores for the Eastern Illinois Panthers, who see their record drop to 15 and 10. Bingo? Well, I think Cleveland State showed character in themselves tonight. They had an 18-point lead, saw it dwindle down to two points. The official was not really on their side, seemed like, tonight, but they showed poise. They came back. They got the lead back. They made, uh, got it up to 10. They won by eight. I said good luck to them for the next game. 
Okay, so that wraps it up from here at Lance Gymnasium. This is our final regular season telecast. We will be back with you if the Vikings get into the AMQ8 Conference Championship game. So if that doesn't happen, we will say our goodbyes for now. We want to thank you for having tuned in to our 15 telecast this season and certainly hope you'll join us again next year. But again, we want to encourage you to get down to Cleveland State on Saturday and cheer the Vikings on to victory against Valparaiso. So that does it from here. Uh, for my partner, Bingo Smith, this is Alan Davis saying good night from Lance Gymnasium, where the final score once again was Cleveland State 78 and the Eastern Illinois Panthers 70. Good night, everyone. <laughs>